So we all know about Disney. And basically everyone knows their princesses. I mean, off the top of your head, you can definitely name at least a few. Well, the official Disney princess brand consists of these 12 iconic characters. And as a part of this brand, their designs are put on tons of merchandise. Anything from beach towels to mugs to lamps to pens. And with such a wide variety of items available, there are some children who can grow up from the day they're born being surrounded by these characters. And despite all the love that there is for them, there's no shortage of people saying that these princesses are bad for children, especially with the beauty standards they set. I mean, it's no secret that Disney intentionally makes the princesses beautiful. But what we're going to look at today is how this Disney perception of beauty is potentially harming children's perception of beauty. First off, Disney princesses are thinner with more exaggerated waists than what can be considered realistic. In a study done by some researchers, the waist-type ratios of various Disney princesses were calculated to see how compared to the optimal of 0.7. They calculated this ratio for 11 different Disney princesses, including Anna and Elsa from Frozen. And as you can see in these data, the ratios of all the princesses were below 0.7. Jasmine's was the furthest, well below, with 0.309, and Mulan was the closest, with 0.689. What this data shows is that all the Disney princesses have waists that are exaggerated beyond what's even considered optimal. For more comparison between a realistic waist and a Disney princess waist, BuzzFeed Video put out a video where women reacted to photoshopped images of princesses to have more realistic waists. And we can see just with these images here that there's a big difference between how they look. One reactor said during the video, if all the Disney princesses had these waists, then it wouldn't seem like any big deal. It's just that you're always comparing it to this. I As that reactor well put, when comparing a realistic body to a Disney body, what's realistic is going to look a lot less desirable and is some even fat just because you're putting it up against an unrealistic standard. Another thing to look at is how Disney princesses versus non-Disney princesses are treated. To do this, we're going to take Nani from Lilo and Stitch and Jasmine from Aladdin. Now right off the bat, we can see one huge difference is their bodies. Jasmine is a lot thinner, while Nani, on the other hand, has larger legs, a more realistic waist, and even a bit of a stomach. Another difference is their roles in their movies. Jasmine is mostly Aladdin's love interest, a beautiful girl he's trying to win over. While on the other hand, Nani's Lilo's sister, and we see her at highs and lows, and we learn a lot more about her personality than we ever do about Jasmine. Another difference is how their bodies are treated during their movies. For both characters, there's a point in their film where they're wearing something more revealing than what they typically do. But the difference is, for Jasmine, she's forced to wear this outfit by Jafar, and she has to be the seductress to try and gain power over Jafar. But on the other hand, Nani is just swimming and surfing with her family and having fun, or she's working at the luau to try and support her and her sister. Another difference we see between these two characters is visibility. Because Jasmine is an official Disney princess, her image is put on tons of merchandise and seen by children all over the world. Well, Nani, on the other hand, doesn't get this same type of exposure. It's easy to go into any store and find some sort of merchandise with Jasmine on it, but for Nani, that's not the case. To find like any figurine or doll, you'd have to go online and probably get it from like eBay or Amazon. And because of this difference in visibility, Children are being exposed to Jasmine and that idea of beauty while not seeing Nani and her more realistic body. Now to look at how these characters are directly impacting children, we're going to look at a study done with Thai kindergartners where they were split into two groups. One group watched Disney princess movies and the other one watched Disney animal movies. Now before both groups watched the films, they reacted to a chart that would look something similar to this. They picked a number based on the body that they thought they had and the body that they wished they had. Now the difference between these two numbers which showed a level of bio dissatisfaction within these children. They respond to this chart before and after watching the film, and here are the results. As you can see, the group that watched the Disney Princess films had an increase in their bio dissatisfaction, while the group that watched the Disney Animal films actually had a slight decrease. And after this study was done, these kindergartners were also interviewed. And to read off a couple quotes, I want to lose weight. My friend told me I can be a princess if I'm slimmer because Cinderella is slim and beautiful. I want to be a beautiful girl so I cannot be a fat girl. And to read another one, if I compare myself to Belle, my favorite princess, I am really fat. Belle has a small waist and a beautiful shape. I want my shape to look like Belle so one day I can wear Belle's dress. My mother is fatter than Belle. Now, they both mention a desire to be there to be more like these princesses. It seems that they recognize that Belle and Cinderella's figures play a large role in their beauty. 
All the girls that watched the Disney Princess films recognized and identified with the thin portrayal in these films. And many of them in their quotes reference characters larger than their princesses as being fat. And this is very harmful for children because it isn't realistic for someone to look like Cinderella, especially because Disney princesses' bodies are very exaggerated. For a young girl to look in the mirror and think herself fat because she's larger than a princess is just not realistic because nobody is gonna look like these princesses. And for her, she may see herself as fat, but in reality, she might be average or even thin, but just not Disney princess thin. People cite the newer era of Disney princesses as Disney changing the beauty standards they set. For example, we have Merida. She has crazy, unruly, curly hair. She rejects being traditionally feminine. And she's even a little bit thicker than previous princesses. But about a year after her film came out, she became an official Disney princess. And with this, all the Disney princesses got updated images, but fans were quick to notice that for Merida, she was made thinner, and they also gave her more cleavage. Now this sparked some outrage, and Disney eventually changed her back, but the issue still lies in the fact that they changed her in the first place. Just when it seems that Disney might be changing the beauty standards they've set, they show their true colors by reverting back to their old ways. Disney has set these beauty standards as being thin, with extremely accentuated curves, and it's harmful for children. But like I said, naturally, Disney princesses are meant to be beautiful and appealing, but the fact that being a beautiful princess is limited to this slim, accentuated figure is harmful to children that see these characters all the time and aspire to be like them because they idolize them.